Hello there, my name is Aladrium, and welcome back to Project Bedrock. And today in this episode, I'm gonna fail spectacularly. Yep, bet you didn't see that coming. We're gonna put our first shop here up in the shopping district, and um, spoiler alert, it's gonna be different. Now we've got wool, we've got bone meal, we've got a couple other things that I want to start selling, and to do that, we need to get our shop up and running. So I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is first clear in this entire area here because I really don't want to be building down in this pit. I think building in this pit would be luck. So let's go ahead and fill this in and cut to our first time lapse. And with that now out of the way, oh wow, that portal's really loud. I want to talk to you about what the master plan is for this. So I have this area right here and coming out of the portal in the nether, this is usually the first spot you see. There's one block in the nether portal that will put you out facing really adequate, lovely build. But over here, you're most likely gonna be coming out of this build right here. So I want something that when you come out of the portal, it kind of catches your eye a little bit. And this is the angle that I am going to be working with. This is what I want people to see. And what I'm thinking I wanna do is have some sort of kind of maybe larger build here on the left side and then maybe do some like crosswalk tower. We're gonna wind this path up just a little bit and try to make something that looks a little bit interesting. Continuing with our theme of wanting to experiment with color, I think what I'm gonna do is use yellow wool, some of this stripped birch log, and then also some stripped oak log. And maybe for a couple of other things, maybe mix in some yellow terracotta. And then if I'm feeling really adventurous, some honey block and some honeycomb. I think that that could look really good together. I think that that's a nice texture and palette. And I think that when we build this, it will start to look a little bit okay. Now I currently have my alt account over at a couple of farms trying to refill a couple pieces of material. So we're not gonna have a time lapse for this. Let's just snap our fingers and skip ahead straight to the end because sometimes what you really need in life is some instant gratification in the first two and a half minutes of an episode. Oh, and uh, by the way, I did apply the silence armor trim. So hope you like it. I'm not sure about it actually. All that work for the silence armor trim and I don't think I like it actually. Why don't you let me know down in the comments if you like the silent slammer trim, but I, I, I really don't. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. Again, reminder, this is the angle that I wanted to have coming out of here. And I wanted you to see something a little bit interesting. Now, I haven't built a bridge yet, but I have built a path up here. And this is where I think this entire build fell to pieces, if I'm totally honest with you. I was going for like kind of a rundown thing and so I was trying to have lots of trees, lots of bushes, but at some point, this entire build just fell to pieces. And if I'm totally honest with you, since I'm recording after the fact, I've sat on this episode for about three weeks right now because of how much I do not like this build. So I'm gonna show it off to you. I've decided I'm gonna show it off to you and you can roast me down in the comments for possibly one of the weirdest builds that I have ever built. But let me go ahead and show you what it is. And you know, maybe you can convince me that it actually looks good. There is another angle that I was considering. I just want to pop over here. And that's the angle from really adequate's house. I think I got the roof design. Okay. I just think the build just doesn't work. The build from adequate's view just doesn't work. So coming over here, I am intentionally left this kind of bare because I'm covering this all with some sort of grass or moss or, or really other thing. The grass is really the color of all of this. I have built on a little room right here that we can sell all of our wool blocks and we'll go ahead and add that just a little bit later. It looks a little bit like a creepy backrooms dungeon. I will admit that, but it is here so that we can sell all of our wool. Coming over here, I have these couple of trees that I've made kind of a little custom and then this tree over here. And this is a very, very interesting tree because it only works from one angle. And I don't know, oh wow, sorry, I just crashed into that. Let me try to show you what I mean. If we come over here, this tree right here, it kind of swoops up out of the side and then kind of hooks over. And I think it gives it a really, really interesting look. I really do like this tree. But when you come over here, this is what the tree looks like from the back. 
this tree is just so weird. I could not find a way to make this tree look the way I wanted it to and have the level of depth I wanted to any other way. So unfortunately, this is a one angle view build is basically what I've made. It looks OK, actually, from here. But yeah, when you go up from the top like that, oh, it just it looks really, really hideous. But it is very, very interesting having it come out of here. And I think having a build that only works from one angle, maybe maybe that's just the thing. I do have these other rooms in here, which I really wasn't intending to use for anything. I did try to really make this look like a old rundown fort or a rundown castle, something along that lines. It's something that is lore wise, has probably been here for a very long while. It was built before we had any real building skill or building techniques, just very simple. I did try to add some elegant roof lines in this with kind of the thing right there. Hello, horse, would do you mind? Why are you climbing up here, horse? You're being all sorts of crazy. So I did try to add some elegant roof lines to try to make it look a little bit interesting. But the feel that I was going for is that this is kind of an old rundown fortress castle. It was built a very old time ago. It doesn't have a lot of texture. It's being overgrown by nature. And we're kind of just repurposing it for our purpose. So I don't know. You let me know down in the comments whether you like this or not, whether you think it's interesting. Now it's taking me a very, very long time because I only have the shulker boxes that are in my inventory and I don't have the time or energy to manually harvest a whole bunch of them because we don't yet have a shulker farm here on the server. I have brought over the majority of the wool that I have from the wool farm and we're going to go ahead and sell this into this shop right here. Now, I'll be it. I only have five shulker boxes and if I'm going to be totally honest with you, I'm borrowing maybe three of them for merely adequate right now on a temporary loan. He knows about it. Um, but I have about nine of every color. I think what I'm going to do to make sure that we have enough stock is load each of these up with uh, not 16, 18, 18, two rows of double stacks. And then we'll probably sell all of these for a diamond each. I do have these labeled over here as well so that people can see what color in the chest very, very easily. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is something that's a little bit different. If you've been watching my streams, you know, I want to find a way to measure how fast our horses are actually running. And I'm sorry if they look like they're running a little bit weird. I had to speed up the video in post just a little bit because uh, it recorded wrong and everything's kind of a little bit laggy. So I'm just trying to get that back up to the right frame rate. But I have a pack here that lets us test these horses. Hello, horse. Can you like get your head out of the ground? Come on. So we can now see just how fast our horses are. It's not super accurate. Like it, it's got a little bit of a delay. But if we average that, I think I saw 51, maybe 50 there at the top. Yeah, 50.3, 50.7. We now have a way that we can find out just how fast all of our horses are. And I'm really, really curious. I found these two horses and I think they're really good, but now I have an empirical way to measure them. So that other horse was 50, that black beauty. This one is not so fast, actually. 48, 48, he's a little bit slower. So uh, unfortunately for you, um, you might have to be made into glue a little bit later. Let's go test out um, the other two horses that I have over by our main mace. I'm actually really curious to see if they are any faster. All right, so back over here at our main base, I have Mercury. I have high hopes for Mercury and I have Abigail. We're gonna try to get them out of the stables here real quick, just see how they are. So Abigail, um, we'll bring you out. We're going to go ahead and test you first. The hills shouldn't really matter. Ah, 51, 51.9. Abigail's a winner. So as far, she's in first place. Okay, let's put Abigail back. And then Mercury. Come on, Mercury. Don't disappoint me. Oh my goodness, Mercury, you're a disappointment. Well, Mercury, you're officially the worst horse. Good news for you, there might be a home in the glue factory. I'm so sorry. That's such a disappointment for all of us. Let's go ahead and wrap you back up here. And actually, Abigail, I decided to go ahead and give you a golden carrot since you're such a good fast horse. Good job, Abigail. Riker, I'm not even going to test you. But that's going to be it for me in this episode. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and let me know what you think about the build down below. I'll go ahead and see. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.